I'm giving you the full game plan to having your first $10,000 a month selling products on Amazon. And one thing that's really important is that this doesn't involve any marketing, advertising, or even creating your own product because you can take the simple and fast route of selling name brand products on Amazon. And it's all because of name brand products that I'm gonna show you how to find cheaply that I've been able to do about $2.3 million in sales in the last year. And these methods aren't just working for me either. They've also worked for people like Sam, Peter, and Sadiq who have all scaled their Amazon business selling name brand products on Amazon. So I'm super Super excited to jump into this with you today. So first up, let's cover the true fundamentals here. If you don't yet have an Amazon seller account, you can go to sell.amazon.com and you can go ahead and sign up for an Amazon seller account here. It is $40 a month for the professional plan, which allows you to integrate with software, get approved to sell big brands a little bit easier and win the buy box, which helps you win more sales. We'll be diving into all that kind of stuff here today. So I'd really recommend you just go ahead and sign up with that professional account. Since you're watching this video, you're clearly serious enough to just go ahead and start with that professional plan because it also saves you a dollar per unit if you're on the individual plan, which is free. After you go through the sign up process on Amazon's website, they're going to have you verify your information as well as a little bit of personal information about your business, all that good stuff, just so they can pay you out legally and all that kind of boring paperwork that we have to get taken care of before we can start finding profitable products. So if you haven't gone through the process yet, go do it today. It can take a couple weeks if they want to verify your address. Sometimes they'll send you a postcard, all that kind of stuff. So knock this out right now. So with the obvious step of signing up out of the way, what types of stuff can we even sell on Amazon, right? This is the problem that stumped me as a beginner Amazon seller, I actually completely gave up on this business model that I'm going to teach you guys here today. I gave up. I came back a few months later. This was about four years ago. And I had given online arbitrage a shot where we're just looking at big websites here today. We got a big sale at puma.com on a bunch of products that already sell super well on Amazon, but I just had no idea how to find winning products. And if you're a beginner, that's probably you as well. It's not easy to find those first winning products, but I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for you. So let's just go ahead and dive in here. Pulled up this as an example is because there's a really awesome kind of semi-annual sale going going on today. You can see that's like up to 60% off. Plus we can get a coupon code. Really anytime you see a big major retailer running a massive sale, there's going to be some opportunities for us to find those exact same products selling super well on Amazon. And a good rule of thumb was basically what we're looking for is if we can find an item at the Puma website for about half of what we're going to sell it for on Amazon, we're probably going to be making some money. And I'm going to try to make this as understandable as possible. I do like to go a little bit fast because I want to respect your time as a business owner, but I'm going to try to break it down for you here. So let's go ahead and open up some of these listings here. And we can start to figure out if any of these are profitable to sell. And this is where I'm going to introduce you organically to the software that we need to actually make money buying the stuff on Amazon. So let's go ahead and dive into this listing right here. And I'm going to show you just the bare basics, right? As I'm looking at these products, I have no idea, right? If you're a brand new seller, you have no idea like what this sells for. How do I figure it out? And that's where the first paid product research tool comes in. This is called Selleramp. This is our product research tool. And basically what it's going to let me do here is search pretty much any term while I'm on that website. And in this case, I also want to go ahead and add Puma because I'm looking at those the Puma branded items right here. And so let's go ahead and pop some of these listings open. So when I do that, it searches this title and this is searching all of the Amazon data about this product. So you can see here is the essential men's short. Let's make sure these are the 10 inch inseam right there. Yeah, so 10 inch right there and sweet. So it looks like we've got a match, right? So seller amp right here helps me find matches of website sales that I'm looking at and it helps me find that exact same item on Amazon. It's also gonna show me a little bit of information about the item. So in this case, it has a 70,000 best sellers rank, which the way sales rank works, the closer it is to one, the closer it is the best selling product in the clothing category. So these Puma shorts are number 70,000, which actually can still sell pretty well. And I like to buy items under about 150 to 200,000 sales rank typically. It's also showing me that Amazon is on at least one of the sizes of these pairs of shorts. We're going to go ahead and open up this listing here with the Amazon button on seller amp and let's dive in and see what we can figure out, right? So here you can see this is the estimated sales between all the different sizes and colors on this product. So you see the 70,000 best selling product still sells over 200 times a month. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea of how much opportunity there really is waiting for us on Amazon here. And down here is where I want to introduce you to another paid product research tool, right? So this is Keepa. I'm going to leave the links down below for all the tools. This is Keepa. This is Selleramp. They're both about 20 bucks a month for you getting started out here. And what I'm going to use Keepa here for is to find the basically the most expensive and best selling version of this pair of shorts so that I might be able to buy it on this website and flip it for more on Amazon, right? So let's go ahead and check out the variations tab of Selleramp. And then this will basically allow 
allows me to filter by the current price on the listing. So when I do that, I can see that here's some of these black shorts right here. We might have a profitable product here, to be honest, because we can see that we've got these 10 inch essentials, small shorts right there. I think, yeah, we've got the small in stock over at Puma website. And so yeah, when I check these out, I can see that these are right now, they're going for about 30 bucks. If I buy these right now for $15 plus an extra 20% off, I can do that math in here. So we can do 15 times 0.80 because it's 20% off. We're buying these for 12 bucks and we would sell them for 30 bucks. So this would be a profitable product. Literally the first item we looked at here. So that's pretty cool. But now we got to figure out if this specific pair of shorts actually sells. So I'm going to go back over here to the variations tab. And there's lots of complicated data we can dive into here. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible for you. But basically what I'm looking for is to see that right here, we can see they got four ratings on the black small right here. And I also noticed that I haven't really seen many recent ratings on this product. You got to figure if people have been buying this recently, there's probably an increase in the number of ratings on a product. So this might not be the best example of something that sells super quickly, right? What I want to look for is products where we can see that rating count increasing. So basically the more something is selling, the more likely someone is to leave that five star, the one star, the three star review, whatever it is. And this is showing me that these pairs of shorts actually do sell, right? So it looks like we've got these that probably do sell. The other reason why I like to use the variations tab right here is I can filter by the current price. This is showing me like these are like 28 bucks right now. If I'm buying those for 12, I'm making four bucks. It's like just below that ROI threshold I like to look for. Usually I'm looking for about like 35%. So if I spend a dollar, I want to make a dollar 35 in profit. Sometimes I might make an exception if something sells super quickly or stuff like that. So since we get below 28, once we get down here, I don't really want to waste my time or, or look at any of those other items there basically, right? And maybe we could dive into these up here that are those $30 versions. I would just rather find a really solid example with you guys here today. And so we can check this out so we can see 28 bucks. And this is another reason why we want to use paid product research tools, right? So this is showing me that Amazon has pretty much always been selling this product. See when I mouse over it, it tells you that Amazon is the seller. Typically we don't get to share sales with Amazon when they're on a listing. It's their marketplace, they make the rules. And so I would just probably go ahead and hop out of this listing and we can try to find a different product on the Puma website that sells really well. So that's how I like to look at products where I know when I might find some profit on Amazon. So let's check a couple more items here and hopefully we'll find some profitable products here for us to, to compare. And then I'll show you another sourcing method that's even easier for beginners because it can be complicated to actually know where to look, know which items to look up, all that kind of stuff. As you saw here, there's there was like a couple thousand products on this sale, right? So if you're a beginner, how do you know which of the 2000 products to look at? I'll show you a major hack to get around that. So let's check out some of these other listings here, right? So here we got some slides. Let's do the exact same thing and let's find the most expensive versions of this pair of shoes that is on this listing basically. So we've got these are 27 bucks right now. The buy box. So when we add it to cart, basically these are gonna be 27 bucks. And these are the size nines, I believe when I hovered over that listing right there. I'm gonna go a little bit faster on this listing since we've already kind of broken one down. So these are 27 bucks. And let's see. So if we're buying these for 27, let's make sure we actually have these in stock over here. So size nine. Yeah, those are in stock. So we can add those to cart. They're also 20% off. So this might be a good example of a winning product, right? $12.99 times 0.80 again, because we got 20% off. And right here, we can make six bucks profit and 50 8% ROI selling this product. So this would be a good example of something that maybe you could make that your first product selling on Amazon. Don't copy like the exact products that I'm showing in this video, just because lots of Amazon sellers are seeing it now. The price might go down, that kind of thing. But this is a good example, right? So we can buy this when we'll make $6 profit every time they sell. And then when we go ahead and check out like the variations for this product where we came from, see how there's a nice natural increase recently and in how many ratings there are compared to that last product where it was just like stuck at four. This one has gone from 123 up to 129 over the course of the last couple months. Very rare that people actually leave reviews for stuff on Amazon. I don't know about you, but usually it's just when stuff goes wrong, right? So you don't usually see ratings for all the really good transactions that are going on, especially on these name brand stuff that should be obvious that you're getting a, a fairly good product. So that right there, we found a winning product, right? So this pair of slides over here is a great example of something that you could go ahead and sell on Amazon. I'll should be showing you how to prep these items, ship them off to Amazon, all that good stuff. Because a lot of times people don't talk about that part. They just find the product and say, oh, sell on Amazon. So let's go ahead. And before we do that, I want to talk about how to get approved to sell this product and break down another awesome sourcing method for you. For this example right here, this is Puma branded items. There's almost no shot you're going to be able to get automatically approved to sell these big brands on Amazon. And a lot of people think that you need an invoice from a big wholesaler or distributor or got to work directly with Puma. I know I definitely had that misconception and I didn't know how to get ungated in brands for like a year when I first started my business. I was just selling books. So I had to sell like $100,000 worth of books before I could do any like name brand stuff just because no one would teach me how to do it back in the day. It was, it was like hidden knowledge. But I'm going to give you that secret, right? So on this example, we found these slides profitably. All you need to do to get ungated in this brand like Puma or any other brand that you want to get ungated is you want to go ahead and go over to Amazon Seller Central. Once you have your login, 
and all that good stuff set up. And then once you're on Amazon Seller Central, go up here into the top left, go ahead and go to catalog and then add products. And then that's going to take you to this screen where we can start listing products that we want to sell on Amazon. So in my example, I'm already ungated to sell Puma. So I can go here and say condition new, sell this product. It's probably going to say apply to sell for you. Like for example, if I go to a brand that I am gated in, like DeWalt, for example, if I press like used condition here, new condition, it's going to say apply to sell. And then that's going to make me basically submit an invoice for these DeWalt branded products. I can press request approval right there. And you can see here is the qualifications that we have to meet to basically get approved to sell DeWalt products. And you can see we just need to be able to buy 10 units of this from anyone who's basically authorized to be selling DeWalt products. In our example, Puma is obviously authorized to be selling their own products. So you'll just take that online invoice that Puma would email you after you buy these slides, go back over here to Amazon, drop the file right here and submit that to Amazon basically. And if you get denied, that's completely normal. We still get denied from time to time. Sometimes the Amazon reps just don't know their own rules and that kind of stuff. Just keep submitting that invoice that you got from Puma in this example, but eventually you will get approved to sell those big name brands. And so now that you know how to look at a website, figure out what might be profitable and get approved to sell these brands, I want to show you a major sourcing hack. And this is how I would recommend that beginners do the majority of their sourcing. If you find a really solid sale like this one that I'm looking at here today, it can be worth it for you just to jump in there. But like I was saying, when you're a brand new seller, you don't really have any idea like what products might be worth looking at, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to use a method called storefront stocking, which basically allows us to go in here and I'm going to just pop open a couple other storefronts here. It allows us to go in here and check out the products that other Amazon sellers have already found profitably. And this is something that gets talked about pretty often, right? Just look at what other people sell and, and figure it out from there. But you want to go the extra mile here. And since we can connect the dots and say, hey, I know a really cheap place to find Puma products today. Let me look and only see the Puma branded products that other sellers have in their storefront and see if I can find some profit based on that. So I went into this storefront right here and they got 43 feedbacks. So they're probably making pretty good money. They've probably done a couple hundred thousand dollars in sales on Amazon at the very least to get 43 feedback right there. And so let's see. So we can open up all their Puma products, right? So here are the 12 Puma branded items that they've already done the research basically for us to figure out if this stuff is profitable, if it's worth us selling on Amazon. So we can see here is like a similar version to that slide we were just looking at. And this one could be profitable as well. So instead of finding a good item and seeing if it sells well on Amazon, we can go to a good item and then we can see if it's on sale enough for us to make a profit basically. So I'm going to pop open this item right here. And then I'm also going to just pop open the seller ramp extension so we can see everything that we need to see. Let's go ahead and search this product. I figure we probably know where we're going to be finding it. We can use these buttons right here to make product research a little bit simpler. And that's going to start searching that product, right? So that just grabs the title of this product. It searches that into Google for me. So it's just a nice little quality of life thing. And I think we probably have them on sale right there, right? So that's that all black version. A lot of these are sold out. So we can see like just the eight and the nines are what we're left with. So what was this one that they had profitably? So they found the 10 profitably. This would be a great example where you can go in down to either the Google Sheets feature of Selleramp. You can just go in here and create like a custom Google Sheet that says like out of stock or almost good products, that kind of stuff. You can track products that are back to school friendly. Anything that you want to remember later, you can throw in the Google Sheets feature right there. We can also add a note. So we can just say out of stock on the notes right there. So OOS. And then if we ever want to go back and basically remember which of those products we might want to check out, we can go to our history. We can search our history for OOS right there. And then after I search for that, it's basically going to pull up all those products where we've tagged it as out of stock. We can also like star the product right there if you want to. And we can basically see, okay, only show me all of the starred products that I have. And when we select that star right there, you can see here's a couple that I've starred. This is just like my demo account for videos and stuff. So here's a couple products that I wanted to remember. There's lots of different stuff that you can play around with. And some people get really fancy with it. Some people keep it really basic. Whatever makes sense for you and whatever makes you money on Amazon, keep doing that thing. I just want to introduce you to a couple higher level things so you can introduce that if a lot of this other stuff's making sense for you. But on this example here, let's see if the nine and 10 or the eight and the nine are in stock because that's what we had here. So let's see. So the size eight on this listing is going for like 24 bucks. I think we might still be profitable at that point though. So 12.99, see, so 12.99 times 0.80 or not 80. We definitely don't want to pay a thousand. So 12.99 times 0.80 and bang. So we're buying these for 10.39. We're selling for 24.91 on Amazon. Let's make sure that this price is consistent as well. So we can use the charts down here. You can also check the charts on Keepa, whichever you like looking at more. See here, it's got a good history of going for 30 bucks or so during the spring. Recently, it went down as low as like 20 bucks. So obviously we wouldn't want to sell it for 20 bucks because that's most of our profit, but we can see basically ever since April, we're in the middle of June right now. We can see that it has been decently profitable for us. So we can probably rely on selling this product profitably here. So 1039 selling for 24 bucks, a little bit of a different method, right? But this way we were looking at some brand that we know we can get 
it really cheaply, look at someone who's already done the work for us and found something profitably for us. And then we basically just say, hey, I know where they're probably getting that. Let me look at the sale where I think they're probably getting it. And in this case, this is almost definitely where they were buying this profitable item right here. And we can basically just hop on that listing as well and start making some money on our own. So before I show you how we can ship these profitable items that we just found into Amazon, let Amazon do all the customer service, all the work for us, all that good stuff. I want to quickly introduce you to something that is extremely important in your business. Those of you guys who pay attention to this, we're going to make way more money on Amazon in the long run. And that is leveraging extra discount methods, right? So for example, with these Puma shoes right here, we can go to a website called Cashback Monitor. Then we can go right here, press Puma. And this shows me all of the different websites out there that give me cash back if I buy on a certain website. So in this example, I can see that Be Frugal right now, they're given the best cash back rates today. So on that item where I'm paying about $10.39 a piece, if I go through Be Frugal and just use their link, it's free to use these services. I'm going to get 10% of that buy cost back. So it's basically just extra free money in your business. There's not a lot of times where people who say free money is like actually true. But in this case, like you've already found something profitably, you might as well click one button on the cash back extension and send it through, make 10% extra. There's also cool resources like Card Bear, where I'm not sure if Puma has too many great gift cards. Yeah, so 2% we can get discounts on buying discounted gift cards. But let's say you find profitable items doing the same thing at websites like Ulta, right? So you can go to Ulta and here you can see lots of different websites where we can buy up to 17% off gift cards. This one right here called Raise is one of my favorites. Let's check it out though. So we can see right here, if we buy a $500 gift card, we're immediately going to get 5% raise cash. And that's basically just money that they're going to give you for buying gift cards through them. We can also buy gift cards from other people. So this is just regular people selling gift cards down here. So let's see, we can like discount high to low. See right here, if you want to buy see $100 worth of the Ulta gift cards, you can get 17 of them and you only have to pay $91.54 each, right? So you get 8.5% of your money back on top of stacking the cash back and whatever coupons and sales and all that kind of stuff you're taking advantage of. Sometimes when people talk about like selling on Amazon and like calling it like scalping and that kind of stuff and like charging crazy high prices, a lot of times we're not even charging that much more than retail. A lot of times it's below retail on some of these items and we're just really stacking as many different ways to find a deal as possible. If you're the type that likes to pull a fast one on some big companies, like really do some digging for discounts and coupons and all that kind of stuff, you're definitely going to love doing online arbitrage. And I definitely have liked doing it for the last three or four years as well. Definitely changed my life. So I'm excited to see you be able to start taking action at this stuff. Now that we've found our couple items, got on my soapbox a little bit, told you some things that are going to be really important. If you're the type of person who takes action on what I just showed you there, you're going to make a bunch of money on Amazon. And so now that we've got an example of a profitable item that we can go ahead and send off to Amazon, I want to talk about how that process works very briefly. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take this pair of shoes that we found profitably. We're going to ship those to Amazon FBA. Once it arrives at Amazon's warehouse, they're going to split it across the country, do whatever they got to do to basically make it available for customers to buy as soon as possible. And then once a customer buys this item, Amazon's going to ship it to the customer for us. They're going to do customer service, all that good stuff. And I like doing Amazon FBA because I get to go back to focusing on spending more money, buying more profitable items while Amazon does like the boring part. You can also use FBM, so fulfilled by merchant. So if you want to buy this product and list it the day it gets to your house, you can list it via fulfilled by merchant on Amazon. I've got a full video on that on the channel. I'm going to dive into FBA with you here today because that's how the majority of Amazon sellers do it. But FBM does have definite advantages. It's more work, but you can test items quicker. It's a really good idea as a beginner Amazon seller because you basically get to get your money back almost twice as fast with FBM just because you're not like shipping to Amazon waiting for it to get there, all that good stuff. But I would definitely look into that. Again, I've got stuff on the channel for that, but I want to walk you through basically how we can get this product from the Puma website, list it on our Amazon account and making sales with as little work on our end as possible. And to do that, I want to introduce you to our software Boxum. And what Boxum allows us to do is ship items off to Amazon way faster than ever before. I'm super excited to share Boxum with you. We spent a year developing it and it's very recently out. And before we jump into it, make sure you get your 14 day free trial of Boxum down below. Test it out for completely free. If you don't like it, cancel it. If you realize how much time it's going to save you, keep it. It's going to save you a bunch of time and money in your business. So let's go ahead and create a shipment here. Since we're just testing like some Puma slides here, making a little test shipment with you, going to name it testing Puma, name it whatever you want. This is where you'll select your ship from address. So obviously I'm shipping from a fictional address here. Can't leak too much personal information on the YouTube here. This is where you'll select your shipping method. So since you're a beginner watching this video, you're going to be doing small parcel, which is where you're just putting it all in a box, slapping labels on it, shipping it off to Amazon via UPS. I'll walk you through all that process here. Once you're really scaling, you can do LTL shipments, which is where you're piling up on pallets and making great money doing it that way. It's a lot cheaper per pound to do LTL shipment, but still very affordable to do small parcel. I'll show you guys that here and I'll be showing you guys how to set this all up here, right? So we can also do case packed versus individual. Basically, if we do case packed, we're saying, hey, Amazon, I have 10 of these. They're already all packaged together. Don't split them apart. If we do individual, you're going to say, hey, Amazon, I have 10 of these. Where do you want them? And the benefit is with case packed, we're going to get less split shipments. So we have less different destinations 
destinations to send it to. With individual, we can send it all across the country and it becomes available for sale a little bit faster. So that's the trade-off there. I'm just gonna be using case packed with you guys here today. We can also do labeling preferences. So I'm gonna show you how all that works here. But when we send items off to Amazon, we have to basically label that item. It says, hey, Amazon, this is my custom barcode. These are my items. When they scan it, they know whose it is. When they scan it into the package, they say, hey, Alex made a sale. Awesome, Alex made a sale, right? If your name's Alex, hi. <laughs> we can also let Amazon do this process for us. So we can pay 55 cents a unit to let Amazon do it. With Boxum, it is much, much faster. If you're just in a major time crunch, you can. 55 cents a unit can really add up though. So I would recommend doing it yourself. We can also do 2D barcodes, which 2D barcodes used to be expensive and really complicated and that kind of stuff. We were able to introduce it much cheaper and easier than ever before. And basically what this lets us do is it's a little bit fancy, especially if you're a beginner, but it helps us get items checked in at Amazon a little bit faster. It helps us embed the box contents. It helps us tell Amazon, hey, this is what's in the box a lot easier. I'll show you what that looks like because if you've never made a shipment, that's not going to make a lot of sense to you, but it's a big time saver basically. We can also say we want to print our FBA box labels as we prep and box them here. I like turning this on. I'll show you why as we're making the shipment, but you can also auto set the price. So you don't have to guess and check and figure out where you want to list the product at. I always just set it way above that buy box price or that add to cart price so that when it basically checks in at Amazon, I can lower the price back to whatever it is. If the price goes up while it's on the way to Amazon, I don't want it to check in and sell for less than I should have sold it for, right? So I like send it at well above the buy box. I'm going to have it also store my buy cost supplier and date purchased as well. And so let's create this shipment, right? Probably the easiest way for us to get this done is going to be to grab the ASIN right here. So this is basically like Amazon's custom barcode or like UPC, whatever you want to call it for that item right here. So you can see here's the size eight cool cat 2.0 is right there. This is also all fully searchable. So if you want to look at only catalog products, so that's stuff that's already listed on Amazon, you're going to look at stuff that's already in your inventory. It's going to show up here. Can't show too many of my products here. This is my real Boxum account here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this item to our batch here. We are buying these for 1039 each. Let's say we bought 20 of them. We want to put 10 in each case. You can put all 20 in a case. You can have them all in different cases, whatever you want to do there. I'm also going to go ahead and add just like a testing supplier right there. Go ahead and add our date purchased. And then just so I can show you how this works down here, this is also going to set a custom SKU for us. And then once I've got all that information punched in there, it's also going to give me basically a custom SKU. So this SKU, basically you can use it on the back end. And in my example, I want it to tell me, hey, what did I pay for this item? When did I buy it? It's going to help you do a lot of things like uh, repricing, just inventory management type stuff. It's just a good uh, habit to get into in terms of setting that variable SKU right there. And this variable SKU is also configurable in the settings. So you can make it say whatever you want or as little as you want. But let's just go ahead and add this to our batch right here. And this is basically going to say, hey, Amazon, we've got 20 of these that we want to ship into Amazon. And then once we've got all the products we want to ship into Amazon, all the stuff showed up at your house or you're happy with how much it showed up, we're going to go ahead and continue. And then we're going to go ahead and submit this item to Amazon and ask Amazon and say, hey, where do you want these items shipped? So in this case, we told Amazon we have two cases of 10 of this pair of shoes. So it said, hey, we want some of these in Fort Worth and some of these, uh, I'm not sure where that fulfillment center is off the top of my head. You can let me know if MGE better than I do here. Let's go ahead and confirm all of our shipments there. That's basically going to say, all right, Amazon, we're good with that. We're going to send those 10 pairs of slides to you. And this is where we really changed the game, made the prep process much easier. And the way we did that is with this bulk assign button right here. So we can say 10 units per box. We have one box. We could also say, hey, we have five units per box and we have two boxes. I and mean, it's just going to automatically create these boxes for us. So we say, hey, we have 10 units. We have one box right there. I'm just going to do this because it's probably how you do it in reality. We've got 15 pounds or so. You change all the dimensions, all that kind of stuff. You can add a new box and change those dimensions. If you got eight in one and two in the other, however you want to do it there, I'm just going to leave it something like that. And then once we got all that set up there, you're going to take those 10 items, put it in the box, measure it out. This is where you'd also want to get like a shipping scale on Amazon. Just make sure it can measure up to 50 pounds because a 50 pound box is the maximum that you can send in one box at a time. So in our case, 15 pounds, 20 by 12, whatever it would end up being, just simple tape measure, that kind of stuff. And then we'd go ahead and save and print our FBA box label there. What that's basically going to do is down here on my laser printer, that's going to print out our box label. And on this label, there's a bunch of information that Amazon wants to read, and including our 2D barcode, which tells Amazon basically what is in the box and helps them scan it into Amazon a little bit faster. You can also see if you have a bunch of boxes that you're sending in, it will tell you the box number right there. So you can see this is box one. If you were sending in a whole bunch at a time, I know when I'm shipping in massive shipments. Like I used to be like writing in Sharpies on the boxes and stuff, like trying to remember which box was one, which was two and so on. And so that's our FBA box label. So we've got all of our products. We figured out what size box they're going to fit in. And then you also need to go ahead and print the F in SKU labels. And before you put those Puma slides in the box in this example, we would take our F in SKU labels. So these right down here, you can see they're pretty small. They're like little barcode label looking things. We're going to take this barcode label and then we're going to take the item that we want to basically label. We're just going to cover over that UPC barcode that might be on the item. So in this case, I just got like a book off my bookshelf on those Puma slides. You would put that barcode over the barcode that is on the 
box itself. And basically the reason for that is we want Amazon to scan the barcode and say, hey, this is Alex's product. This isn't just the random UPC on the product. This helps us know exactly whose product is who is, right? And if you're not sure how to get all this kind of stuff printed out, that kind of stuff, I'm using a Rolo label printer. We can also use, there's cheaper ones called like the Polono label printer. That one's like 60 bucks. Rolos are about like 200 bucks. They're a little bit nicer. And right on here within box and we can custom configure how big we want the labels to be. We also have our software box and print that senses basically a little bit of stats about your printer and prints it out on the correct size label for you. But that's like the boring printer setting sides of things. If you have any issues as you're going through creating a shipment, just contact box and support and they'll help sort you out there. But now that we're back on our shipment here, we've got all of our FNSQ labels printed out. We're going to cover the barcodes and all of our items. We've got our FBA box label nice and printed out. We can go ahead and continue on and you can see how fast this is going to submit to Amazon. We're basically saying, hey, we've got all the information complete about our shipment. This part is much, much faster than it's ever been before. We wanted to make this as fast as possible for you guys. So right there, it's already submitted off to Amazon. At this point, you can see right down here, basically what it's going to charge us for shipping and go in here and say, all right, on a 15 pound box, they're charging me $7 and eight cents. We have super discounted rates when we're shipping through Amazon FBA. Go ahead and accept those shipping charges right there. And then after I accept those shipping charges, you're just going to go ahead and print the shipping label, print it on the exact same label size as this one right here. Slap it on your box. And as soon as you're done with that, you go up there, you mark it as shipped, you put it out on the front porch. You can schedule a UPS pickup or you can go and drop it off at UPS, paying for UPS pickups, usually five to 10 bucks, depending on how far you are from the store and where you're buying that UPS pickup through. And in our case, we also have one more of these 10 unit shipments. So we could go and do the exact same thing, bulk assign it to the box, print out our F and SKU labels, slap it all up, slap the barcodes on there and ship it off to Amazon. And then you get to go back to doing step one where we're just finding more profitable items. And there's one last thing that I would highly encourage you to do. And this is the secret behind most of the sellers who scale to that first $10,000 a month faster than anybody else. And it's existing in public. So what I mean by that is go just document your journey, document what you're up to. If you go on Twitter or Instagram, you'll see a bunch of really small like Amazon FBA related accounts. I love interacting with the community, the smaller sellers, that kind of stuff. And if you're putting yourself out there, sharing pictures of, hey, I got all these boxes shipping out to Amazon today. Or, hey, check it out. I spent a thousand bucks on profitable items. Or, hey, I'm running into this issue. Does anyone know how to fix it? Exist in the community. It's going to make you way more money. This is something that even fewer of you guys are going to take action on, but the ones who do, you're going to see how powerful this is. And once you do start posting your progress, tag me. I love retweeting all that kind of stuff, interacting with you guys, but love to keep growing the Amazon seller community because it just makes it more fun and more profitable for all of us. But if you don't already have SellerAmp or Boxum, the tools that we were using to run the Amazon business today, make sure you get free trials down below. Test them out. Let us know what you think. Contact support if you need anything. And again, there's a completely free trial. So if you hate it, cancel it. Go try something else. No hard feelings. Also, let me know if you have any questions, comments, anything like that. I'm always super happy to answer that down below in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button while you're scrolling your way down there. And I really appreciate you watching this video and I will see you next time.